Hey guys, Greg here, Bone Tactical, and today we are going to show you a little bit of the newest Bone Hawk. Okay, I'm going to give you a compare and contrast of all of the models available. There's two different models, so both models available. These come in these cool shamogs here, shipping with the Bone Tactical patch on there. If you don't like the Bone Tactical patch, you can it's Velcro, so you can just slap another patch right over the top. We're going to get into some chopping, some testing, some destruction testing. We're going to try and destroy these tomahawks today. But first, I'm going to talk a little bit about them. I'm going to tell you why they are the most effective edged weapons and self-defense tools in the world. And I'm going to just give you the rundown about these tomahawks, okay? So let me come in here and show you exactly what we've got going on here. This is the Resolute Warrior Bonehawk, okay? And we have got the Modern Warrior bone hawk as well all right right here is the modern warrior bone hawk and we've got the resolute warrior behind it so i'm going to talk about these like i said i'm going to try and destroy them today i'm going to do destruction testing i'm going to do all kinds of stuff with these but the first thing that i will do is i will talk about specifically what they are okay pretty easy to get out of the sheath there as you can see i'm just gonna kind of set this down here and I will show you one more time how you get it out of the sheath. Okay, it's got the buckle on there, so it's jumpable. We put the buckle on there for the Special Forces guys that are jumping out of planes with these. That makes them jumpable. All right, what we've got going on here basically is we've got, this is the Bone Hawk. All right, this is the current in stock and shipping. This is the Generation 5, the most recent. We'll make some small changes and then we'll make the next generation. Let me go ahead and give you the rundown of how you can use this and what we got going on. Basically, the first thing we've got here is this is the cho this is the choked up grip that we talk about. And this, the way that the sheath is designed, it allows us to use the tomahawk in a less lethal manner. So that basically means that you can use it like a like a hammer. If I wanted to use this as a self in a self defense situation, but I didn't want to kill somebody, what I could do is I could just swing it like this. Okay, I could swing it with this on here, or I could choke up on it and use it as the same. I would just punch with. Okay, I'm punching. I can do it. A tail slap to the back. I can ham. Now my hammer fist is basically weaponized hammer fist. Okay. Obviously, punches here and any kind of punch that I'm using, it, it's now much more powerful with this in my hand. Going from there, all right. We'll take the sheath out. All you do is undo the buckle, like you just saw me do. Grab it right here and pull the tomahawk right out. That's how you get the tomahawk out. Again. All of the same features apply. I can use it here to carve, whittle, do things with wood, stuff like that. Choked up grip, any kind of close quarters combat. One of the great advantages of this in super close quarters fighting is that if I go to, if I am swinging something like a machete or something that's very long and somebody gets in between myself and my weapon, for example, in here, then what's going to happen? They're basically going to now be able to disarm me. So let's switch to the other tomahawk really quickly. So what we've got here, again, this is the Resolute Warrior Edition. And if I'm out here swinging, if somebody's has very close to me, if we're in tight, if we're in a building, if there's a wall very close or something like that, and I swing and that person gets in between here and my tomahawk, then they can just, they can block off here. It's not effective anymore. And they can take that tomahawk from me. So what that allows me to do, if, if, I, if I'm swinging this tomahawk and then somebody gets very close to me, what I can immediately do is just drop it in my hand like this, come in here close, cover up, and now I'm just punching like regularly punching. Okay? Obviously, the tail spike, I can just flip it around to use the front side. I can flip it around to use the tail spike. Okay? Swinging in here. What we've got here is an unsharpened beard. All right? Why is the beard unsharpened? Well, on any kind of a decent modern combat tomahawk, it'll never have a sharpened beard. Why is that? Because I want to be able to come in here for hooking and trapping movements. So here I am now, and I've got control of that person's body via hooking. Okay, so what I can do is I can go over the arm and the wrist like you see here, pull through, release, and then cut or chop or even spin and embed that that spike. We've got a pry bar on the bottom here. 
okay? This can also be used, we've got these ridges all the way up and down the handle here that are for grip. And basically what that does is allows me to grip very well, but still have this beautiful smooth wood handle and finish that you can see there. In the Resolute Warrior Edition, we've got this dark finish, which is actually the metal itself. That's a patina finish on the metal. It's then clear coated with Cerakote and we've got Coco Bolo handles. Okay. On the Modern Warrior Edition, we have micarta, our proprietary micarta that we use our Bone Tactical Coffee Company bags, and then we use the Bone Tactical Coffee Company bags to make actual Bone Tactical micarta. And the finish on these is Cerakote in a Macmillan tan. It's it's a basic, very common sniper color, so it's what what a lot of our modern warrior special forces guys are using and wanting. So that's why we've got this color on these. All right. That's the main difference is the handle material and the colors. That's about the only difference. The steels are the same. Heat treatment's the same. They're differentially hardened. So they're hardened in, in three points, triple, triple hardened basically here, here, and here. They're about 58, 59 Rockwell. And then they, the harden is, is differential. So that means it gets softer into the handle. Being three-eighths of an inch thick, they're so extremely thick that they're the strongest and thickest tomahawk on the market. This 4140 steel in this thickness is just incredibly strong, incredibly, incredibly strong. And the fact that it's not hardened in the middle means that it's just almost literally impossible to break. You could, you could run over this thing with a tank. You could mountain climb and use it to, to pull yourself up. You could tie a rope off to the bottom of it and use it as a hook, as a grappling hook, throw it up over something, allow the, the beard to hook, and you could it could be a life-saving. There's just so many uses for this tool that I can't even really begin to describe all of them. So this is kind of what we're, what we're getting into here, talking about a little bit of this, but like I said, we're going to show it in action as well. Okay, we're definitely going to show it in action as well. From here, I kind of want to just give a little bit of talk a little bit about how it's made. These are all handmade, 100% handmade. We've got this hand chamfer, okay? Every edge is hand chamfered, okay? We meticulously go through and do all of these edges by hand. You can see how beautiful this is. The bone letters are hand stamped in here, okay? We've got hand stamped bone letters are on there. Again, handmade handle scales out of material that I sourced myself from the jungles. You can see I'm down here in Central America right now on, on a property. We've got about a thousand acres down here and, and it's just a massive property and, and we go out in the woods and we don't like cutting trees down. So we go out and just spend days on end ho hoofing it on foot through the jungles looking for, looking for fallen exotic hardwoods that we can drag out of there and make handles out of all right so we've got bronze in here so nothing's ever going to rust as far as the handle or fall apart or have any problem with oxidation it's again clear coated in cerakote so just extremely durable both use bronze rivets you guys already saw the handle system we've got these holes in the handle that are not just for lightning they're also hex sockets so they can be used for any kind of purpose as far as loosening nuts and bolts we've got the bottle opener in the top the pry bar in the bottom is quite obviously a pry bar aside from its martial arts use and again this is just an extremely versatile weapon as well as a great bushcraft tool we're going to show some of the use here in a second of these guys and let's cut right into that okay guys bone hawk cutting test ham hawk right there okay solid leg of a ham all right of a pig we are testing for flesh uh, i'm gonna see what this can do against flesh we have got uh i'm gonna talk a little bit about how it how, what the newest design is designed to be it's designed to be able to be worn on a plate carrier so you can see the size here it will actually fit on a plate carrier all right so it's a little bit smaller than the previous hawks a little bit lighter but every bit is strong it's the strongest and sharpest tomahawk in the world if I were to have it mounted on my chest rig or on a belt carry or something like that, I would just hit the button here, okay? Hit the button and pull it out of the sheath, okay? I'm gonna toss the sheath over here and we're gonna do some cutting tests. And I'm gonna see if it'll cut hair. They don't leave the, they don't leave the shop if they won't cut hair, all right? A lot of guys will say the, that a shaving sharp tomahawk is too sharp, that it won't hold up to the test of, of 
actual destruction testing, but today we're going to prove that false. Guys don't ship shaving sharp tomahawks because they can't. They don't have the ability to make a proper tomahawk. So let's see what we can do against some cutting flesh. I'm going to talk you through this. I'm going to go about 70, 80% here, maybe 60%, and just show you that the, the blade will do all the work. I don't have to go crazy. All right, nice little swack there. And we're talking about burying. What it does here is it goes deeper than the blade itself. The blade here is about three and a half inches to this section right here. But what it'll do is it'll actually move in with that flesh and it'll cut four inches deep. And it doesn't just cut four inches deep like a knife will. It, it cuts a three inch wide swatch into the flesh, flesh here that's four inches deep. So I can show you guys it go. There's no bottom to this cut here, and it's that deep. One whack from this thing, and you're talking about just absolutely devastating. The difference between a knife, a knife enters like this. This thing enters like a flathead screwdriver and just destroys everything in its path. I'll show you that one more time. Okay. Again, I'll show you from a side angle here. This, that goes all the way in. It's buried six inches deep right there and easily comes right out. All right, again, this is hard, hard, hard. And I, I can show you, I mean, I'm burying my finger more, that's, that's six inches deep from a three. You can look at this tomahawk and think it's small, but when it's properly designed and this sharp, it's gonna bury. Obviously, this end is designed for, for hard targets, okay? It'll, of course, very easily penetrate here, but this, this end is specifically designed for hard, okay, penetrating hard objects like concrete, like metal, things of that nature. But we'll, we'll show you, right now what we're showing you is the ability of this to destroy flesh. Okay, there I hit some bone, so I'm gonna try and hit this bone again and see what it'll do to the bone. All right, it, that just cut right through the leg bone right there. You can hear that. All right, all the way through the entire tomahawk is buried and it's even coming out a little point right there. So with a few easy swipes, I can cut this entire ham in half. All right, we're, we're through the ham. I'm gonna throw this on the grill later so I don't wanna completely ruin it, but you're looking at just devastated. Devastated. Just huge. The bone is broken here. Okay, so you can see that the leg bone is actually broken there. Here's the the other end of the leg bone, and it's broken. There's there's that loose movement means the bone's broken. This is right here simulating the forearm of a human with several layers of gene material, the heaviest duty material that it would be possible to have on in the winter time, for example, if it was a terrorist with a remote control in the hand, possibly going to trigger a bomb. We'll see if it would be possible to disable the ability of that person to hit the trigger button. Okay, I, I, I kind of missed there, <laughs> but uh, it went all the way through. All right, clear through. All the way through the bone. All the way through the bone and all the way through about 85, 90%, even cutting through the other side of the shirt material. So I'll show that one more time. Here we go. All right. Cut through about 85% again, cut through the bone, cut through both bones. All right, we've got two heavy bones here. You can see both. That's, an inch and a half of bone right there that it just cut through in one single swipe. All right. A lot of damage there. Cut through about 85% again, cut through the bone, cut through both bones. Bone hawk cinder block destruction test.
no damage to the point whatsoever with the cinder blocks. Bone Hawk standard paint can. damaged at all, edge is still good. See if it'll still cut wood. 